to be here with everybody. Very good to be here with everybody. And yes, I had a uh, one of those short audios uh, today, earlier. And I feel much better having, uh, you know, sometimes, guys, well, often, always, when something is uh, burning within you to say, right? You don't really want to say it, but I feel so much better after the fact. My entire day was disturbed because I didn't want to say anything. But then it happened and somebody said day 10. Keeping up with the days, awesome. Right, to do you guys remember when the days began? Although, although, I'm not saying anything about that, but um, glad you guys are keeping track. We have until that time to organize quite a few things. We do. I was on the 19th, by the way. 19th. That's when it started. It was day one, the 19th. So, earlier today, just to give you guys something, right, I had a, uh, I had a not so good time in, in a, uh, I guess you could say, uh, no, this was a vision. This was like a vision. You know how when you, don't, you zone out, right? I went all the way out, and I found myself in a place with people, noises and discussions and all sorts of things. And I saw a tablet. Before that, though, this person called me on my cell phone. Now, this is within the vision. This person called me on a cell phone. Somebody who is, doesn't call my cell phone. Anyway, I saw the name. And I'm, it just went away. But all of a sudden, I found myself in this room. This guy was showing a tablet, giving it to leadership, our leadership. He was attempting, he was, he was desperately giving them some information about a message. Within this message was a statement. And if I'm not mistaken, it, it and I think in the writing it, it was a Sunday or a Monday. One of the two is a Sunday or a Monday. Anyway, this was clearly an act of retribution for something dealing with Palestine. And the message read, it was a message to it looked like a network of people that they should not be out during those times, right? And it was presented on a tablet, of course, and they were trying to tell leadership. Well, somehow I was able to see what was on that tablet, which immediately my eyeballs went straight to the tablet. These guys, when they wrote that message, again, they wrote it to a network. And if I'm not mistaken, it was a Sunday or a Monday was one of the target dates that they were going to enact, whatever they were going to enact. And it was a series of events, not just one. But I had to tell you guys that. It's in an audio. I had to tell you, but the funny thing is, after I had that, that was all this happened today. After I had that, a few hours after going through that, I was thinking about it. All of a sudden, I just totally forgot about it. I was going to write it down, but I forgot about it. And then the phone rang. And an accident had happened. Just like it was in that vision. And the person who called the cell phone does not call my cell phone. They don't call my cell phone. In fact, they just don't call the cell phone. When that name popped up, my breath ran out. It, it did. It did. It did. Because, hey, can you imagine having a dream or a vision and you see your cell phone, somebody calling on the cell phone? Now, in a dream or vision, of course, it didn't go any further than that. In this case, when you do it for real, if that were to happen, your mind goes right to that, you know, to that image that you saw prior. And, of course, you're going to say to yourselves, I cannot believe it because I said, oh, it, it kind of, you know, give me a big caution. And then it all rushed back. And so I jumped online to tell you guys the other part, how before it was too late. Because the only thing that was going through my head was, it's going to be too late. They're not going to have it. It's going to be too late. So what difference can this make? I don't know. But I knew I did what I needed to do was to get you guys that info. So you have that info. When 
the event happens or whatever happens they're planning, it's not going to stop with one thing. It'll be a series of things. A series. They plan on doing something to multiple locations. Multiple locations. Now you know. Now you know. And of course, listen guys, with a dream or a vision, right? Not all dreams or visions are important like this, but there's some dreams and some visions that will burn inside of you. In other words, you're, you're not going to be okay until you do exactly what you're instructed to do. And I had to do that because I was trying to ignore it. I, I was purposely trying to ignore it to get away from it, right? Because I've had enough dreams and visions. People have heard enough about dreams and visions. And I didn't want to do anything with that. But when the cell phone rang, well, that was the end of that, right? That was the end of that. So I did get the courage to tell you guys that. So now you know. Believe me when I tell you, I don't... If I had one dream every three years, yeah, I'd share it. But when you have these things back-to-back -back or something like that, you don't want to tell anybody that stuff. You don't want to, right? You just don't. You don't want to. Someone says timeline. Nope, no timeline. All I can tell you is this. In that dream or vision, again... When I was in this thing, my cell phone rang. A person's name popped up on the cell phone that never pops up on the cell phone. Never. I mean, never. And there was an accident. That's why I got the phone call. Then it snapped over to a person with a tablet trying to show leadership, our leadership, some other folks, a message from some network, from some people who want retribution for something that happened in Palestine. Well, we know what happened, I'm assuming. And they were going to get their retribution. And after having that dream or vision, some hours passed. And I kind of, you know, blotted that thing out of my mind. But all of a sudden, my cell phone rang. I pick it up and look at it. It's the exact same color. It's, you guys know how it is when your phone rings. A specific color pops up associated with unknown contacts, right? Uh, the number pops up, right? Um, then, of course, when it's the person you thought it was going to be with what you were shown and the very thing that you dreamed about or had that vision about is the nature of the conversation. That's it. What do you do? So, of course, at that time, Right? I, I had heart palpitations and everything else. I really did. Because I do not want to share this. The, the implications of it are too, they're too vague, number one. But they seem to be quite uh, heavy. The implications of it. And it's not going to be a good outcome um, if it goes through. When that happened, I jumped on air to tell you guys about it. Okay, because normally when that takes place, it, it, they don't fail. They just don't fail. Now, do I have, have I? I have never had a dream where I was on the phone. I've never had a dream of a phone call. What kind of a dream or vision is that? And in this case, this was more of a vision because I was not sleeping. I was kind of zoning out. You guys ever zone out, right? You zone out, but this time I zoned out all the way. There was no coming back. I went all the way out. All the way out. So anyway, those things are very uncomfortable. I did not want to share it, but you have it. And thank God for Flash and, and uh, Mayor, because they recorded that. Okay? They recorded that. So it's on the record. I did what, apparently, what I was supposed to do, because I have, I'm at peace now. I was not at peace prior to that. The day was extremely chaotic and unsettling. Uh, after, you, after I told that, you know, I was good to go. So that's the way it works. Do you give credence to dreams and visions? I would tell you guys to always remember they are dreams and visions. You don't really know the origination uh, a factor of a dream or a vision of anything, right? Unless the Father has expressly given that. But let me give you a caution. Even if a dream or vision comes true, do you guys understand something? That it is written in the Bible that God will give someone, right, a truth to tell us people.
Now, please hear me on this. He will give someone a dream or a vision or a prophecy, a truth to give his people. And that thing comes to pass exactly, right? Here's what the Father says. He says, should a prophet, should a person do that, that thing come to pass exactly, right? That's right, Deuteronomy. If that thing come to pass, and the person begins to, they begin to lead you away from the Lord, the Bible says the Lord does that to see if you love him with all of your heart. So please understand that. That's why you shouldn't get excited over dreams and visions unless you have some pretty good discernment, right? Because the Lord will try us. He will. He will try us. And there is a scripture explaining this. In fact, when I first, uh, uh, let me read it to you. You ready for this? I'm going to read it to you. Deuteronomy 13.5. Or 13.4. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And you shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage. Or thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk. So shalt thou put evil away from the midst of thee. Now, most people, they, they stop right there. That's okay. If a, if, a, if a person says something, right, and that thing is false, and you, you toss, them, toss them out of the way, right? The Lord did not stop there. He didn't stop there. That, that's one scripture where it depicts one scenario. Do you guys know of the other scenario? Hmm? Here it is. You ready? I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or the son, or thy daughter, or thy wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is in thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, here's where it begins, let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known. Thou nor thy fathers, namely of the gods of the people which thou art round about you, nigh unto thee, or fall from thee, from one end of the earth, even unto the other. In of the earth thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, neither shalt thine eye pity him, neither shalt thou spare, neither shalt thou conceal him. But thou shalt surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him, to put him to death, and afterward the hand of all the people. Now let me stop there. Let me stop there. So, so the Lord is saying what? Just, I'm going to clear this up while I'm doing this, so I, you guys know I had to go into this a little bit more. It says... If your brother or anybody you're related to, your friend or anybody else, says let you go and uh, uh, entices you to go and serve other gods, then you get away from that person. The first one said if a prophet or dreamer of dreams, that prophet or dreamer of dreams, will be put to death, right, because he hath spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God. Did you hear that? Did you guys hear that? Most people say, well, the Bible says, right? The Bible says, if a prophet says something incorrect, that person is a, you know, a phony, right? The Bible is saying here, in every single case that you'll ever read, if somebody ever says something, a dreamer of dreams, a prophet or anybody else, if they say something to lead you away from the Lord your God, now let me back up some. Stay with me. Deuteronomy. 13.1, here it is. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or dreamer of dreams. Let me pause right there. Did you hear that? Listen, I'll say it. If there arise among you a prophet... Or a dreamer of dreams. And give you a sign or a wonder. And the sign or wonder come to pass. Did you guys hear me? If a, if a prophet, if a dreamer of dreams, if somebody among you give you a sign or a wonder. Right? And that thing come to pass. Just like they spoke it to you. But then they, there's a catch. And if they say, let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them, 
Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or dreamer of dreams. Listen, for the Lord your God proveth you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You see that? And then he continues. I read that backwards on purpose. I read it backwards because it's talking about anybody who has a dream or a vision who would then turn you away from the Lord your God and have you follow something else. Did you hear me? Like, I have to tell you, Zechariah sent you. Uh-oh. God says, even if it's true. See, a prophet is somebody who speaks the truth of what the Lord spoke, of what he decreed. That's what a prophet is. Not somebody who fortune tells, but somebody who tells what the Lord has said. That's what a prophet is. A dreamer of dreams is somebody who receives a vision or a dream or something like that that could come to pass. The Lord is saying, even if it does come to pass, and that person say, let us go after other gods. Now, what is that? That's a person who would have a dream or a vision that would come true and press you enough and then start leading you away from the Lord your God into these strange areas. Zechariah like Sinton, somebody digs up something. So what if it's true? Or is, is it leading you away from the Lord your God? You better believe it is. Because it's caused a lot of people to question the authenticity of the Word of God, the Scriptures and the Bible, and a great many things it has. Because they have read it and got the information, but then they began to believe. You see that? Now, in our time, it's quite easy. Very easy. In our time, you're going to have a lot of people doing a lot of things. You're going to have a lot of false Christs. What's a false Christ, by the way? What is Christ? What does that word mean? Somebody look it up. Christ. What does it mean? Christ. That word Christ. Christos. What does it mean? Anybody? Christ. What does it mean? You're going to have a lot of false people who will say, I know the way to salvation. That's what you're going to have. See, in the Bible it says, false Christ will come in the name of the Lord, saying they are Christ. Now, how is that possible? How can a person come in the name of the Lord and then say they are Christ? They come in the name of Jesus of Nazareth and then say they are Jesus of Nazareth? No, that's not what the scripture is saying. They're going to come with a message of salvation, saying they have the way to salvation. They're going to come in that position of authority over you, telling you that they know the way to salvation. If somebody ever told me, hey, come and listen to me because I know the real way to salvation, I'm right there I'm going the opposite direction. If somebody ever told me or ever made that statement, I know the way, I know the real way to salvation, I'm gone. I'm out of there. I'm gone. That's competition. That is a highly purposed statement to recruit people. Right? Nobody ever has to say, I know the way to salvation. No. It's a simple invitation. Do you want to know who do you want to know Christ? Because they already know who Christ is. Everybody on earth. They know who he is. They know what he did. They just don't have a relationship in some cases. But you had a lot of people who used to come, especially on the internet. Pulling people away from other ministries, saying, I know the real way to salvation. You guys ever heard that before? You ever heard that before? Somebody saying, I know the real way to salvation. And in every single case, these people were rotten to the core. Abusers. Drunks. All sorts of things. A telltale sign of what's happening in our time right now. They do it on a broad spectrum now. They'll say, I know what true salvation is, or I know the true way to salvation, and they lead you to a false god, like self-help. They lead you to a false type of Christ, a false type of salvation, which is to make yourself happy. Oh, I'm sure you heard that before. To fulfill all your own dreams. To get everything you can get. That's a false salvation, is it not? Isn't that what the Bible says? When you start looking at the language, 
It's quite easy to see. It's not even, it's not com it's never complicated. Never. It's only simple. The problem is us. That's what the problem is. So getting back to false prophets and things like that, I used to hear a lot of people say, well, if somebody says something and it doesn't come true, right? Then that's it. You just turn, no, God is very specific. When somebody says something, listen, because a prophet speaks what thus saith the Lord. A prophet just does not speak anything, but they speak what the Lord speaks. That's what a prophet does. A prophet carries the declaration and the word of the living God. That's what a prophet does. They will speak to you what God spoke. So there, there should be no error in their speech. A dreamer of dreams is somebody who may dream something, and yes, it may come true. Yes. But what the Lord say? If anybody ever does this, and so what if it comes true? If, they, if it comes true and they say, let us go after other gods, you get away from that person. And the Lord said, he will do this on purpose to see if you love him with all your heart or not. Because, can I tell you something? People used to, when, when COT first began, there were folks that would come in the chat room and they would say all sorts of things, right? And then a lot of people with good hearts would say, oh, we got to protect the little ones. I said, are you crazy? You don't protect the little ones. The Lord protects them. They didn't understand that. They said, no, we gotta, we got to kick out all the deceivers. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't have to kick them, kick them out. And then I said something odd. I said, it's important that many young ones be deceived. They said, well, why did you say that? Here's why. You can only be deceived by something that you desire. You cannot be deceived by something you do not desire. If a person goes to follow another god, then they saw something in that other god that was also in them. Many people are pulled away a few times in their lives. And the beauty of it is this. Once you go down that wrong path and you find out it is not Christ, you do come back home, number one, but you come back home with experience. You come back home knowing how the devices of the enemy work. You come back home knowing that how the slick tongue works and how you can follow things you truly desire within yourself and how others can speak exactly what you want to have you follow them. You come back educated with the ability to identify the deceit in the first place. You come back armed. And when you do that, when that same tactic comes around again, guess what you do? Somebody comes around with a false message, no thank you. No thanks. No thanks. Hmm? No thanks. Now I have one, one, one classroom question for you guys. Who is the spirit of prophecy? Who is the spirit of prophecy? Jesus is. He is the spirit of prophecy. Hmm? He is. Why? Because he is the word of God. And prophecy is what again? Prophecy what the Lord has said in truth. It's what it is. So when God says, go and tell my people to do so and so, he sends a prophet. Why is it a prophet? Because it's somebody who carries the word of the Lord. Now, Jesus being the spirit of prophecy, no wonder Paul said, above all things, covet the gift of prophecy. Because you will carry the truth. The word of God. See how it works? I have an understanding about that. You know, when people used to say, God told me to tell you so-and-so. I never liked that. Never liked that. Because even when I was young, the Lord gave me discernment to know if a person is speaking out of their own spirit, if they're really declaring anything from the Father. If anybody declares anything from the Father, you're going to find it. In the word of God. Because you have to have a witness to that. But people. There was a whole generation of folks speaking out of their own spirits. At the same time this prosperity gospel was in the earth. 
You guys know I'm telling the truth. They did that just like Ezekiel says. They spoke out of their own spirits, and God never spoke to them at all. And they would lead people into captivity or bondage, that is to follow them for the sake of money. Now that's in your Bibles. Now I'm saying all this to give you a caution. With dreams and with visions. Everything should line up with the word of God. That means if somebody has a dream or a vision, right? You got to be careful that they're not going to lead you away from Christ Jesus. Be careful. Even if it comes true, especially when it comes true. That's why I somewhat degrade all my dreams and visions. Because I do not want anybody coming here because they know of a guy who saw something that came true. Big deal. Anybody can do that if, if they are so inclined. God said he will do that anyway to see if you love him with all of what you are. That's why in the Lord's Prayer it says, lead us not into temptation. Why? Because God made several declarations where he would test us, put us into a temptation place to see if we love him with all of what we are. And so the Lord's Prayer says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That's why it's in there. See that? Somebody say if it's not in the word of God, it's false. Well, no, not necessarily. It will line up with the word of God. And we're talking about everything God declared, right? Right? The Lord has always given specifics as time closes. Always. If it leads you away from Christ, if it has you believe that Christ is somehow Pokemon or something like that, you messed up. Everything anybody would ever say concerning a dream or vision, giving by the living God, God always gave dreams for what? Warnings. He never gave anybody a dream and said, hey, I had a dream that we're going to celebrate. He never, I never read anything like that in the word of God, did you? Never did. With every prophecy, with every word he gave, when he gives a word, you got to understand something. Why would God have to give a word to people who are supposed to be able to hear him anyway? Because they won't listen. And if they won't listen, they're in trouble. That's why every single prophet came with a warning. Because the people would no longer listen. They wouldn't listen. They were stuck in their own heads, stuck in their own beliefs. They wouldn't listen. Yes, we have geo alarms going off all over the place. Heavy pressure alarms going off all over the place. We do. So, it's uh, the, the, um, the atmosphere is overcharged right now. Overcharged. It is 1.2 MGH as is over what it usually is. That means the atmosphere is very heavy with part particulates that are charged. That's what that means. And normally that translates into other geoactivity that takes place. COT has lots of sensors all over the place. Because I know that one day we're not going to be able to reach everybody else's sensors. So starting in the 90s. Me and four other people began to put sensors all over the world. Everywhere we could go, we stuck sensors everywhere. We did. And so far, only about, maybe about 24 failed or gone. They're kaput. The rest are operational. Anyway. Anyway. You all have that, right? So when I, when I ever tell you guys a dream or vision, please do me a favor, right? Continue to follow Christ. You can take many things under advisement, right? You can. But always go to the Lord to have everything verified. If you do that, most often you'll find that you can be a compliment to anybody who has a dream or vision that was truly from the Most High. Just go to the Lord. Go to the Lord in, 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 with an upright and honest heart. You say, Lord, is this real or not? Do I need to do anything about this or not? You know? Do that. He will compliment that. But, but, but keep in mind, if you ask that of the Lord, and you get something back, now don't sit there and, and uh, you know, don't have a conniption fit yourselves. Don't do that. Anyway, just telling you guys that. Right? Same thing happened with COVID-19. Same thing happened with Russia. Same thing happened with, uh, 
Well, quite a few things in COT, dreams and vision-wise, right? Things, they came to pass. And over time, you begin to see how things happen, right? But it does not authenticate me somehow. I'm this, you know, v this vessel, you know, from the living God explicitly. Don't do that. Don't, don't do that for me. Turn to the Lord always, not to me. Try, in fact, get in the habit of not turning to man, period, but turn to the Most High. Let me compliment what the Lord has given you. Never turn to me. Don't follow me. Follow Christ. I can assist in that. I cannot assist anybody in following. I don't want you guys following me. I don't want you following me. That defames Christ. That dethrones Christ. I will not be the vessel responsible for that. That would be a massive dishonor on my behalf, so I can't allow that to happen, and I won't. You can see that. Huh? Thank you. Okay, we're going to go into Revelation. You guys have the info. I'm going to go with that now. And today is the 28th, and on the KD calendar, 28th is one of those days. Now, the calendar days on the KD files, we know it's, it's in or around that area. We know it is. Now, I'm telling you right now, geo alarms are going off, and you guys know what happens when these things start going off like this. You already know. You already know what takes place. Anyway, oh, and we do have that big, large sunspot, although it is, it is not as active as it was, but something is pointed towards Earth right now. Right now. Revelation, tonight, all of us in Revelation. You guys ready for this? I don't know what we're going to find, but we'll find it. Last time we read about the bulls of wrath, and it's not going to be a good time. It's not. It's not going to be a good time in the bulls of wrath, right? We're going to continue. We stopped at, we stopped at the sixth angel, pouring out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. The water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. That's when we went into the complement to that, which is Revelation 9, which is when the sixth angel blew the trumpet. And I give you the differences between the two. So this is Revelation 16 again, right? The complement to that was Revelation 9. Something, sometimes people overlap those two, sometimes. It's okay, but sometimes they overlap the two, right? Somebody says, uh, as you said, Mike, we're all in the process of always fight, but don't trust that. Oh, yeah. So, so it's fight, but okay. All right, you guys. So, Revelation 16, Revelation 9, as far as the sixth angel, and the sixth, the sixth uh, angel that poured out the vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the sixth angel that sounded, right? And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month. We read the differences between the two. A lot of people think those are one and the same. But I, I just, I don't capture that at all. They're very different in my, you know, that's just me. It's just me. I have to go with what the Lord gives me, right? I have to do that. I can't, I can't bend to what anybody else thinks or everybody else thinks. I have to be authentic and go with what the Lord gives me. And oftentimes it, it, gets me in trouble, but hey, that's what I have to go with. Right? If I don't go with what the Lord gives me, I have no basis of any conversation with anybody, and it's over. Right? I won't change just because of, you know, something else. Can't do that. Okay? We are in Revelation, and that was Revelation 16, verse 12. When the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. We also read about this, right? And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Which I did skip over something last night. We explained here at COT the three entities, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, right? Or the dragon, the beast, and the antichrist. Somebody wrote a very good question. And they wanted that explained. Because in media, in the media, in movies and everything else, they always show the beast and the false prophet as two different things. Right? 
I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. They always show the Antichrist and the false prophet as two different things, and they're not. The Antichrist is the false prophet. False prophet is the Antichrist. People forget about the first beast. The first beast is never included in these movies. Never. Like you had, I, 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 somebody, somebody wrote me, I had an assignment for somebody, I said, because they watch movies, and I said, hey, in all these movies about the beast, what do they always show? And the person said, they always show up a person who got shot in the head and came back to life. That's what they said. And then they said, uh, they always show somebody on his side who boosts the people spiritually, right? Or kind of, you know, supports them or props them up, this, that, and the other. I said, oh my goodness. A person shot in the head? No. Because the first beast had a deadly wound by a sword and did live, right? The deadly wound was on one of the heads. The heads are explained to be a nation or an empire. So an empire had a deadly wound and lived, right? An empire did. Um, the other components are named, and we're going to get to that. A sword means war, not a gunshot war so it's not a person who got shot in the head it's a nation that fell by war that came back I can assure you if if a nation is that proud where we'll come back from nothing and see a lot of people say well you know America's the beast okay well it, they thought it was the one that got shot in the head I said how so America's brand new brand new right now, what, what could fall by war and then come back and everybody would marvel? Because the Bible says everybody marveled because of the beast who had that daily wound that was healed, right? Everybody marveled. That means a nation came back, was reestablished. Now, the world would marvel at that because it's also something they can jump behind and be patriotic behind. See, everything, if the world marvels at something, they have to be. They have to have that patriotic attitude behind it. Or it's not going to last. So when a nation comes back from war, from nothing, they come back from nothing, right? That's a, that's a totally different story. Somebody says, Israel, question mark. No, because you have, with the beast, there's a woman atop the beast. She is not part of the beast. The beast he can't stand her. She has mystery Babylon written on her forehead, right? She is the mother of harlots. Correct? Mother of harlots. We just went over that to, to clarify that even deeper. If she's the mother of harlots, she is the first harlot. The first one. The very first one. That means it has to be old according to the living God, not according to man. And if it's the first harlot, harlots do what? For money... They go and have the, the fornication thing, right? God only named one place on the earth that fornicated with all the nations round about her. Right? Somebody says, people keep saying America is mystery Babylon. It is not a mystery for us to be Babylon. It's, it's just not a mystery. Right? Mystery Babylon written on her forehead is a whore's forehead. It, it doesn't, it never said she was Babylon. It did say the beast is going to kill her. The, or the beast, I'm sorry, is going to burn her and eat her flesh. The beast, the world, is going to burn her and eat her flesh. The problem with Rome I have is this. The world likes Rome. And Rome likes the world. That's the only problem I have with that. Right? That's the only problem I have. Rome doesn't really sit atop the nations. Rome authorizes or works with the nations, right? And the nations, for some reason, they like Rome. The beast, this woman rides atop, the beast does not like her. The beast hates her. Think of it as a flea, not somebody who's riding on the back of a beast with a sword, you know, thinking they're all powerful. That, that's wrong imagery. This person is stuck like a flea on the back of the beast and can't even get off. And they're about to die. Think of it that way. Think of a person who is ravaged, who has a horse forehead, who is dirty and filthy, who's been up there since the beginning of these ancient empires. She is the very first harlot on planet Earth. That disqualifies a lot of people. 
See, when the Bible says she is the mother of harlots, that's the first harlot in the original language, the original harlot. So it can't be some of these new nations. It's got to be somebody old, and it has to be found in the Old Testament. And she has to have the adoption of the ways of Babylon itself, or God would never put Mystery Babylon. Mystery Babylon, by the way, means hidden Babylon. Now, does anybody out there think that America is hidden Babylon? No. America is obvious Babylon. Why do I say that? We worship many things, don't we? Many things. We operate by the rule of law. We have kicked out God according to the rule of law. We sit the rule of law above the Lord our God. That's the same thing Babylon did. Babylon had the rule of law first, religion second. Babylon respected everybody's religion. But Babylon went by the rule of law. Matter if a king died, the rule of law would stay and everybody else would fall. But Babylon had a senate. Babylon had councils. Babylon had everything that we have. Why? Because if you read the doctrines of the United States of America, we operate by Roman, Grecian, Egyptian philosophies. We are, we do have the Babylonian, they call them threads or something like that. The Babylonian threads is what this is based off of. So they took the governmental operations of these ancient kingdoms and they integrated that into America. That's who we are. That's why we have a Senate. That's why we're structured the way we are, right? Where did the Senate come from? Rome. That came from Rome. Where did the Olympic Games come from? That came from Rome. That's where it came from. Where did the standard of Republican and Democrat come from? Where did that come from? That came from Egypt. Where did the cabinet idea come from? That came from Egypt. Where did the education system come from? That came from Greece. The library system, the information system that we had, that came from Greece. Science being integrated. Right? Science being above all with the rule of law, science being protected, archaeology also up there in the standard. All these things came from philosophies of these ancient kingdoms. We have legal, in America, it is legal to fornicate. In America, it's legal to fornicate. In America, it's legal to do abominable things. America does not have a right and wrong based off faith. It's based off the rule of law. That's exactly how Babylon operated. So we're not mystery Babylon. We're not hidden Babylon. Now, who has hidden Babylonian ways that nobody knows about? See, if it's a mystery Babylon, then you would never suspect it was anything like Babylon. So if you think something is like Babylon, then mystery Babylon, right, doesn't work. Mystery means hidden, like the mystery of iniquity. Right? It's, it's hidden. Right? That's why God said, He who letteth will let until it be taken out of the way, and then that wicked one will be revealed. The key word being revealed. If it's not revealed, it is hidden. Mystery of iniquity. Hidden iniquity. Right? Now, we, talk, we went further, guys. We went further. Because the mother of harlots... Is written on her forehead. Somebody says, I ran in Egypt. No. In order to be the mother of harlots, you also had to have a promise. A harlot, right, with a whore's forehead means she was promised to somebody and then she fell away from all that. A whore's forehead is a stamp of something they actually used to wear. Do you know that? It, it was an actual physical thing that used to go on the foreheads of those with that profession, and it was not a good thing. And it wasn't a good thing. So, the mother of harlots being the very first one. The very first one. Now, before I go any further, I want you guys to hammer this home. There is two states to everything. Two states of being to everything. There is a fallen state, and there is a redeemed state. Do you see that? We, to ourselves, each and every one of us, we have a fallen state and we have a redeemed state. Correct? We have the old man and we have the new man. Jesus came not to save the old man.
right? But so we can have a born again spirit being totally redeemed, redeemed. We have new bodies waiting on us. So then, whoever is redeemed is promised a newness. Israel has two states to them. A fallen state and a redeemed state. Correct? I got to turn. This thing is just crazy. These levels are going up. So, get bye-bye. Okay. So, we have a, we have, we have, Israel has two states. They have a fallen state, which the Lord talked about. Which is why he called them the daughter of Babylon. He did. He did that. God did that. Because when he exiled them into Babylon, he said, I did that to correct you, but you made Babylon a burden on me. Because of the way you acted, they corrupted everything. Why do you think in the Bible, God said, I despise your feast days. I don't accept this and I don't accept that. You remember that? Of Israel, of his own people. Remember he said that. But there's also a redeemed state. Which is why nobody should have their mouth against Israel. Not one. That's God's business. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's going to fully redeem what he's going to redeem. He'll never forget his own people. And that is his land. It's just that people got in his land and they fornicated with everybody round about them. Read Jeremiah. You'll see the whole story. So the fornicating side... The fornicating side, the bad side, the fallen state of Israel is doomed. That's why she's going to be trampled underfoot for you in two months. That's why. But it's the fallen state of Israel. Because Jesus said those who live in Judea flee into the mountains. After they see the abomination of desolation. Right? After they see it, they are to flee. Those in Judea are to flee into the mountains. If they flee into the mountains... Those are the ones who are going to end up being called back, and they will be the redeemed. Do you see that? What about the rest of them? What about the rest? Well, it, just in case you don't know this, in the book of Daniel, it tells you exactly who's coming into Israel to trample Israel underfoot. It's telling you that. See, the king of the north goes out and he finds everybody who has indignation against Israel. And he has power over their armies. And they go in and trample Jerusalem underfoot. And they set up the abomination that make it desolate. They do that. So you're talking, essentially, you're talking about a bunch of Islamic states. Iran, Jordan, all these Saudi Arabia, all these other folks, essentially joining forces, right? Going in there and attacking Israel to take Jerusalem by force. They go in there and take that. That's called our trampling under foot 40 in two months. They set up the abomination of desolation. They do. God said he would not repent from that time. That time has to happen. That is their moment of trial. And redemption will fall. So he said, when you see the abomination of desolation, right, as it, was, as it was put in the book of Daniel, he said, those in Judea flee into the mountains. Don't go back and take anything out of your houses. He essentially told them to run. And sure enough, in the Bible, you read that story six times, and every single time, it says that God's people, right, they're going to be exiled. The land is going to be parted. It will be parted. They're going to go out to the outskirts of other places. And all the while, the people that are stuck there in Israel, the wives are going to be ravaged, right? Or the place is ravaged. They're going to, do, they're going to burn everything up. They're going to kill everybody they can find by war. People are going to be in prison. It's going to be horrible. And we, the same way the Bible talks about the Holocaust. Never heard that before, did you? I know you have. A lot of people have not. But it's in there. Anyway. So after that takes place, something special happens. God said he would do what? What did he say he would do? We're going to continue to read this in Revelation. You're going to see this whole setup going up to that woman sitting atop the beast. You'll know it very well. It's not really a mystery. The only part people are missing is this. Is that there are two sides to everything. 
For anything belonging to God, right, on this earth, there's a fallen state and a redeemed state. You have a fallen state. God's not here to save the old man of you. God is here to save the new man, not the old man. Right? Not the old man, the new man. The new man will be redeemed and will not be lost. God's doing the same thing to Israel. He's just getting us first. And his final redemptive act will be his own people. That will be the closure of the whole thing. He purposely made them blind. So they cannot see. They cannot fully comprehend what they're doing. And, that, and so their redemptive time will not come before we are redeemed first. We have to be grafted into the branch. Should they be redeemed before we are, this whole thing will be very different. So we're being grafted into the branch. A certain number of Gentiles is to be bought into the kingdom. We're being grafted into the branch. And then after we are completed, God is thorough in his promises true. His people will be redeemed. But all those imposters who say they are Jews but are not. The wolf is coming for them. Oh, it's coming. And they won't escape. It's coming. See, you may not know this, there are people in, in Israel right now who hate, they hate Yahshua HaMashiach. They hate him. If you bring up a conversation about Jesus, they get red in the face. They get angry. They will spit on you and push you out of their face. I've never seen such hatred. They do that. Many of these same people are rabbis. They hate Yahshua HaMashiach. They don't belong there in Israel. So, the Lord is going to purge his vineyard. You ever read that? Isaiah 5. He's going to purge his vineyard. That's his business. Then after he's done, listen, after the trampling of foot of Jerusalem, right? When everybody has scoffed him and mocked him, when they're under siege, when they're in bondage again. People are going to say, where's your God now? I thought God was going to save you. They're going to mock them and scoff them, just like the Bible says. But then, all of a sudden, guess what? The Lord will look down upon his land and pity the people. He'll remember all of them. And at that point, when God's eyes look upon this earth, Jerusalem will become a cup of trembling and everybody who set their hearts against it will be kaput, and they will undergo the most devastating existence they never dreamed of. God will fight himself and be victorious for Israel, and he will punish the nations. It is important that Israel be that centerpiece because let me tell you something, just like you, just like you, you have said it to yourselves. You have said it to yourselves. Don't tell me you were never hurt by what other people said around about you. And you said, why do people always act this way around me? I'll tell you why. Jesus told us why. See, when Jesus came into the earth, they didn't want him there. He told us why. He said, because men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. What that means is, if you carry the light of Christ within you, right, you cause everybody else to be hyper aware of their sin. And they will look at you and not want you around because you're messing up their vibe. Now, that confirms deep within you. You already know this. That is biblical knowledge, which is why you confirm with it. You have internal confirmation of that. You know that to be true. You come around and people start, get, they, they change. Why? Because every time somebody comes around with Christ in them, they illuminate everything spiritually, and that makes others hyper-aware of their own sin, which is why they'll look at you right in the face and say, well, don't judge me. Well, I know you think they'll do it every time, right? So, on a larger scale, 
Israel is doing the same thing. God's promise is there. It's illuminating everything in the earth. See, through Israel, the earth will be healed. If they were to change right now, the earth would be healed. Jeremiah chapter 4. But because they did not a curses over the earth. It's all up to them. But don't worry, the Lord's taking care of it. But he's doing the same thing. He's causing evil to be repulsed by the light in the earth they can't even understand. They don't even know why they hate Israel so much, but everybody will be against Israel, which is why the Bible says all nations are going to turn against Israel, will come down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and God will plead with them there. I hope you know how God pleads. He pleads with great hail, blood, and fire. That's how he pleads. So they're going to be gathered together there, and he will plead with them there for his heritage and his people. But what do we read later on in the book of Isaiah? We read this, that God has utterly destroyed all the armies of this earth. My goodness. All of them. Something so horrific will happen. They're going to drop their weapons and go home. They're going to seek the end. They're not going to want to fight. Why? Because God has already promised he's going to deal with it. And once it starts, it's going to be too late for them. He already said his sword is going to be bathed in blood. He already said he, oh, that declaration is made. That is right before the stars fall to the earth like figs shaken of a mighty wind. And the heavens depart like a scroll when it's rolled together. That's going to take place. The Lord said he would repay. So they are just like you, but on a larger scale. And people are repulsed by the Jews. They don't even know why. When a person does not know why they don't like something, they come up with every reason not to like them. They justify the reason of not liking them just like you. People will always, if somebody does not like you, because you're, you're spiritually, you're illuminating something on them, they'll come up with every reason in the book to be repulsed by you. In my case, I've learned something. People either hate me, this is without, without even being, without knowing me or anything, knowing nothing about me, they will either be able to hear me, or they will hate me. And they won't understand why. And it just so happens, anybody who's drawn to me, normally they have abuse in their past. They have been highly neglected. They see what the world truly is. And they know there are missing pieces in a big story, and nobody's giving it. There are certain types of people drawn to me, and the Lord does you the same way. There are certain types of people drawn to you. Not so you can date them. No, it's not for you to date them. It's so that you can speak to them about the truth God put in you. Somebody says, how could anyone hate you, Mike? Believe me, they hate me. They don't even know me. A lot of people have never heard me. And as soon as they hear my voice, they hate me. But I'm telling you something. That, that's the Lord's doing. That's the Lord's doing. To date, those who hate me curse Right? They're violent to other people. They, they have the same characteristics. They cannot control themselves. They have no self-discipline. They have very little compassion. They're selfish. This whole list of things. You know, in my heart of hearts, I have never and will never wrong anybody. I don't desire to hurt anybody. I don't. In my heart of hearts. I'd sacrifice everything I am before I did that. I'll never take from a child, nor a woman. And no woman, no child, or no man has ever heard me disrespect them ever in life. Of my friends, family, even of my enemies, they have never heard me disrespect them. Never. Not ever. Because it's not in me to do that. 
don't have that uh, self-protection mechanism in me. Some people don't. I happen to be one of those who don't. Which means I'm not going to do everything to save me. And it's not some hero thing. It's just the way the Lord made me. I am not the point here. I'm not the object here. And when you're like that, right? Before you think that's a good way to be, no, 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 it isn't. It's isolated. Lonesome life. It is. It is. Because in truth, you are willing to hear everybody's cry. But you yourself can only cry to the most high. And if you have not found the most high, those are years of isolation and hurt. Years. But before you think I'm Mr. Johnny Good Guy, I had assignments that none of you would say were good. I have had to do things and agreed to do things and did things that I wouldn't do again on my worst enemy. I wouldn't. Ever. So my hands are not clean. They're not. I can only be cleaned through Christ. Literally. I'm the worst person I know. Not you. I am. Hmm. And because I know that, I'm highly thankful for Christ. You know what the Bible says? Those who have sinned the most will love the Lord the most. That's a true statement. Once you realize who you are and what you've done in this world, you realize the depth and the breadth and scope of who you actually were. Based on that, you're going to love the Lord. A bunch. A bunch. Anyway, okay, we have that, right? We have that. Now, back to the back to the bottles, and we'll take a break. Robin says break. We'll take one just a few seconds. So we got to these three unclean spirits, which were quite revealing. We just talked about the, the dragon, the beast, and the antichrist, or the dragon, the beast, and the false prophets. And I know that some people, until they inspect it themselves, they won't be able to get that, about the false prophet, the antichrist, and the beast. There are two beasts, two, just two, and the same one who has two horns like a lamb, a spake as a dragon, the same one who talked to the world and convinced the world to make an image of the first beast, right? The same one who gave life to that beast and instituted the mark of the beast is the false prophet. He is the one that calls fire down from heaven in view of all men. And many, many, many had all for him because of the miracles he did in sight of the beast in him, right? So we explained that already. We did. We explained that. It, on TV, they messed it all up. They did. They, they, I don't know what they were pushing. Maybe it had to align with Hollywood or something like that. I don't know what they were pushing, but what they presented was not the real deal. It was it, The real deal is simple. The problem is, when you start reading Revelation, all these movies pop up. And the popularity of certain things pop up. Listen, let's go ahead and face it. People have, they, they, they are moved by the ideas of a person, right? And sometimes we simply don't inspect the sources of that person enough. Meaning, don't you take my words and go run with it. You better go to the word of God and validate everything. Do not rearrange the word for mankind. Don't ever do that. Never do that. Let the Lord reveal his truth in you directly, please. Do that. So that we can all complement truth. That's how correction comes in. When everybody seeks to operate by truth, guess what? Anything that we have in us that doesn't quite line up is going to be flushed out. But it takes all of us. All of us. Not all of us following one person or believing one person's paradigm, this, that, and the other. No, nope, we believe the word of God. The internal confirmation is within you, which is why I often speak things nobody else has spoken to you. And you all say, yep, that's right. Well, let me ask you this. How come nobody else is speaking specific things? They're simple things. Like when you go around other people and you get that feeling they don't like you, and sure enough, sure enough, they start turning against you. 
right? You have internal confirmation. You would not be able to say amen to anything in the word of God if that same word were not within you. That word is within you so that when somebody speaks it, that internal confirmation kicks in by way of the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of God poured out on all flesh, given in the name of Jesus, right? You say amen because that word is already within you. Even when you read the Bible, you don't learn anything new. You have things confirmed that have always been true. And you found out in your life that when you follow people, you, they can get you off track. They'll start believing things that seem and sound good, but they have no, and you have no internal confirmation for it. You believe it by the weight of the number of people who believe it also, right? But when you get by yourselves and read the Bible, you say, oh, oh, they, they, oh, oh that doesn't line up with the word. Right? So then you read the truth and you say, but I should have stayed with the truth. That was in me the first time. No, I changed it for so-and-so. Yeah, don't do that. Right? How many times have you guys done that? You said, this is the first way I believed it was. And I listened to so-and-so and altered it. And I should have kept it the way I believed it the first time. See, that's confirmation that the Lord put the truth in you. This whole Bible is within you. Now you know. You're not empty. You're not empty. Right? God responds to truth. He's not going to respond to what we make up, to, to what we think. He responds to truth. He operates within the realm of truth. So the more you have that truth confirmed, right? Because you're seeking that truth, the more you're going to have a relationship with your father. The more confidence you're going to have in him because his deliverance will be directly upon you. But if you're working by somebody else's stuff, that never works out too well, right? I, I personally, last thing I'm going to say, I cannot believe something that I am convinced to believe. Because I know about the internal confirmation. I have since I was a little tiny, eeny beady fella. And what makes me so bad, even in my own eyes, is I knew the truth and chose the opposite direction. Many times. I have no excuse. All my sins have been premeditated. I knew exactly what I was doing. That's why I love my Lord, right? I do. I love the Lord. I'll always honor Him. I'll always seek to do that. Because I know exactly who I am. Exactly. Three unclean spirits. What are they doing? They're working miracles. They go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world. They go forth unto the kings of the earth. Why the kings of the earth? Why is this term so important? They go forth to the kings of the earth. Word starts with an L. E. A. D. E. R. S. H. I. P. Leadership. No wonder they go to the kings of the earth. Because people look up to kings for direction right so they go forth to the kings of the earth and of the whole world I looked at this phrase once go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world and, and of the whole world is de-emphasized when compared to the kings and you can see how that's working because the kings of the earth if they have a message or way that they believe they go and sell that idea don't they? And they get people to, to agree with them. And before you know it, they have a bunch of people following them, men following men, and they back the ideas. Not ideas from the living God, ideas from these kings. And these three unclean spirits are impressing upon people to do things that will ultimately lead everybody down to the valley of decision. Do you see it? Everything they're doing is leading everybody down to the valley of decision. This has been, this started a long time ago. There are other books that say these three unclean spirits were responsible for the capture. Well, let me not expand that, I'm saying. But let's just say they're ancient. They're ancient. They're ancient. They're part of darkness. Darkness, what is darkness? Darkness is chaos. Darkness is a potential to be everything, but it is nothing because it has no order. That's what darkness is. Darkness is everywhere. Order is not. Order is the only barrier 
away from darkness. Remember that. Darkness can entice you how? Because remember, it has the potential to be anything. It will often speak to you about many things. And in truth, your discernment doesn't work too well because it can become anything. But it remains nothing. When you have a bunch of wood in a pile, right? It's called chaos. When you organize that wood and structure it, it's called a house. You take order away from the wood, you have, a, you have chaos. You have a bunch of wood that has a potential to be many things, but without order, without a design. Without purposed places, you have nothing. So you look at it and you say, wow, that can be anything. That's right, it can be. And you may be enticed to join it. And you'll have a, listen, here's the trap. You ready? I'm going to tell you guys about a trap. And the Bible says the Lord would not have you ignorant concerning the devices of the enemy. So let me give you a trap of Satan that works very well. You ready? Here it goes. Just like that wood that has a potential to be a beautiful home. Right? Say a person sees that wood, they say, wow, now that's the potential to become everything. I've got it. I've got what I need. And so they sit there and every day they say, I've got what I need. I have, I've got what I need. So all the while, they're looking at this pile of wood. They know they have what they need. And they're thinking of how to construct it, but because they have no order. Every day they come and look at the wood with a thought of a new type of construction, but they never do it. Why? Because they have no order. They have no discipline. They have none of the values that are found in light. And so they come back and look at this chaos, which to them is a potential to become the beautiful home they always wanted. Every single day they are satisfied because they can see they have everything before them, but everything before them becomes nothing, and it never will, because they have no order. That's a trap. Do you all see that trap? That is a trap. Do you see that trap? Because people are truly stuck in life just like that. Have you ever said, oh, I just need this one tool, this one thing? And you get that one tool or one thing, and you still don't do anything. And you say, well, I can't do anything because I need this one thing or this thing over here. And so you get that thing over here, and you get that thing over there, and you still don't do anything. Listen to me. Because you fell in love with the idea. If you fall in love with the idea, right, and you become satisfied by having the materials, to, make the, to develop the idea, but you have no order, no discipline. You're going to end up with a bunch of stuff that can be something, and you'll do absolutely nothing. Come on now, somebody. Nobody ever wants to admit, yeah, I did that. Nobody wants to admit that, but let's tell the truth. Isn't that something that we do? That's a trap. It's a trap. Just one thing about that. These three unclean spirits are working. And it says, ultimately, he gathers them together in one place called the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Now the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. There came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, it is done. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings. There was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake, and so parts and cities and nations fell, and great Babylon came into remembrance before God. At this time, great Babylon came into remembrance of God, just like it was prophesied. It came into remembrance of God. To give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. That is declared in the book of Jeremiah. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found... They were not found. There fell upon men great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, and for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Those are 
bad, bad, bad things that are happening, right? Those are inescapable things. Can they happen? You will see a foreshadowing of that. You're going to see a foreshadowing of an island that will no longer be there. You're going to see that. You're going to see a foreshadowing of great hail. You're going to see that. A foreshadowing is an example of something on a smaller scale. Right? And once you see that happen, once everybody sees that happen in their minds, they're going to say, this can happen anywhere. I dread this summer coming because of the fires. That really gets to me. When people go out there to fight these fires, they're right there in the black on the fire line. And some make it back and some don't. And they're not recognized. It's almost like nobody cares. Just put out the fire. These guys put it on the line. It's going to be lots of those this year. Imagine that. This year they're going to be fighting for your life. And hardly anybody's going to care about their lives. Well, except me. I will. I tend to see the unseen things. Because I've been one of those unseen things. So I'll never not, I'll never turn away from things that are you know, not, not hailed or magnified in view of men, but are critical for our continuance. I'll always do that. But these fires are going to be in direct contradiction to a lot of things this year. They will be trying, very trying, extremely trying. I hope and I pray, I do, that people are simply aware of their relationship with Christ for real. Because I know something. See, with the Lord, it's not meant for you to go anywhere. You're not going anywhere. You're going to fulfill what you've been sent here to fulfill. All we have to do is be willing to go forward with the Lord. That's it. No great, you know, things to do. You don't have to learn everything. God requires stewardship. That means you utilize what you have to the best of your ability and truth. And when you do that, he'll add more to you. All right, guys, that was the end of Revelation 16. Now we're about to read about the great prostitute and the beast. Uh-oh. This is the can of worms. This is the biggest can of worms you could ever open. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know right now. Listen, I love the word of God, right? But every time we get to this section, admins, you ready? You ready, moderators and everybody else, you guys? You ready, folks who are listening? You ready? You ready? Because every time this happens, here they come. They'll come. It happens. But I can tell you this time, you guys are different. I've been noticing that. You're very different. It's, it's almost shocking you're different. The spirit is different. Before, many of you guys were, were concrete in many different theories. You're very quiet this time. It's very different. It's almost like you have knowledge, but you also have patience. And you're also hearing what's written in the book. It's, it's, this is, and this lets me know something. Because see, if, if, if Flash has the archive, you're going to fulfill something. You're, set, you're the marker yourselves. You are the marker. Because when anybody gets like this, when God's people, when any of God's people ever got to the point where they would actually hear what was being, what God said. Not what everybody else said, but what God said. Right? Events began to happen back to back. Now when events happen, it means deliverance for God's people. Hope you know that. It's a process of deliverance. And every single time in the Bible before that process actually begins, because there are lots of times it looks like it's going to start, but it didn't. But when the people listened, it started for real. It began for real. <laughs> so now, I'm going to take a break. 
we're going to come back and read this. Hope you guys are ready for this. Hope you are, because you guys know what comes next. The moderators do. <laughs> they know what comes next. Okay, folks, I'll be back in a few minutes right here at COT. This is a can of worms, so get ready for it. I'll be right back in just a few minutes right here at COT. Can of worms, open up. Can of worms is opening up. Now, you guys remember the other night we read in Revelation where the scriptures, John is being shown something. And what it was shown, likened, or called the world Babylon. Do you guys remember that? Do you remember that? Let me go back and recap this because we're opening up a can of worms. And I need you to see this and know this. All right. So let me go back up here and read this. Here we go. And I heard an, e I heard an angel of the waters say, an angel of the waters say, this is Revelation 16, 5. And I heard an angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art, which was, and which shall be, because thou hast judged thus. For they, shall sh they have shed the blood of the saints and the prophets. Remember that. That's Revelation. They have shed the, bloods, the blood of the saints and prophets. This is Revelation 16, 6. So in Revelation 16, 6, it says, they have shed the blood of the saints and the prophets. Who did? Who did? Who shed the blood of the saints and of the prophets? Let's continue to read. And thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Now, let me back. Who, who are they? Who is he talking about? Well, he's talking about the third angel. And a third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and the fountains of water, and they became blood. They became blood. And the angel of the waters said, so, so he poured out his vial upon the fountains of waters and the rivers, and they became blood. They became blood. Why did they become? They, they became blood. Right? They became blood. Now, he just talked about, we're talking about the whole earth here. We're not talking about one place. We're talking about the whole earth. All right? These seven bowls of, the, of God's wrath are upon the entire earth. Because right before that, the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became the blood of a dead, it became as the blood of a dead man. And every living soul died in the sea. So we're talking about the whole earth here. This, this, the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. And then this same angel makes a declaration. He says, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art, which was, and which shall be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed blood of the saints and prophets. That's very important. For they have shed the blood of the saints and prophets. Who shed the blood of the saints and the prophets? Those who were left in this time that would endure the wrath of God. The sinners, the sinners did. Those who refused salvation, those who rejected Jesus Christ, those in the earth who were part of the system of the beast. So all those people who are part of the system of the beast are the ones the wrath of God pours out on. Unbelievers, that's right. They shed the blood of the prophets and of the saints. You see how it's not tied down to one area, but it has become, in fact, a true statement. It is unbelievers who have shed the blood of the prophets and of the saints. Do you see that? And where are they? They're all over the earth. That's where they are. All over the earth. So the, this wrath is for them, right? So this, this, this angel says, this angel says, For they have shed the blood of the saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Remember that. Right? Remember that. Because there's a statement we're about to read that says, In her was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints. What are we talking about? See, we're going to get somewhere with this. But nevertheless, it is a can of worms. So at this point, all the unbelievers... All the unbelievers were the same. They're the same. They're unbelievers. And who shed the blood? The prophets, those who didn't believe, the unbelievers. Who shed the blood? The saints, the unbelievers, those who didn't believe. So they're given blood to drink because the waters, the fountains of waters, the rivers, 
are turned blood. They're given blood to drink. You see how in the Old Testament it was down to a region, but in the New Testament it involves the entire earth. Same thing goes for Gog, Magog. Same thing goes for Gog, Magog. Did you guys know that? Do you want to see how? Do you want to see how real quick? I'm making a point here. But in Revelation, in Revelation we're not talking about little tiny regional areas. No. We are talking about the two halves of the one, which is the unredeemed part and the redeemed part. That's what we're talking about. You guys see that? Do you guys know that Gog made Gog's the same way? It's the exact same way. It is mentioned in Revelation. The exact same way. The four quarters of the earth have become Gog Magog. Why? Because it was full of people that matches the description in the Old Testament. It is the fulfillment or the finishing of the Gog Magog war. Can that begin regionally? Of course it can. But we still have the characteristics of those who were affiliated with Gog Magog all over the earth. And what did Gog Magog want to do anyway? What they want to do? They wanted to beat down the mountain of the Lord, didn't they? So God had an issue with them. And he made a declaration against them. Now, back in the Old Testament, right? Just like the Jews. In the Old Testament, the Jews were the Jews. What does it say in the New Testament? What did Paul say? What did Jesus say? He said a Jew is not a Jew. Outwardly, but inwardly. Oh, my. You know what that means? Outwardly is the flesh. You're not a Jew because of your flesh, because of your blood, because of this, that, and the other. You're a Jew because of your faith. Now, he was talking about the redeemed Jews, right? That's what he was talking about. See, that's what you have to see in the New Testament. This is why they did not like Christ. This is why many of them could not make heads or tails of what he was saying. Because he, 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 what he did was he fulfilled quite a few things. He satisfied the mandate of the Old Testament. That's something that a lot of people don't get. And because you're grafted into the branch. That does not mean your title is a grafted thing into the branch. No. When you're grafted into the branch, you're fully adopted. You have become what you're grafted into. A grafting cannot be undone. Do you know that? When something is grafted, it cannot be undone. You have been made the people of God. You is beloved. Oh my. Now, is there a set that is blind in the earth? Yes, and the Bible makes that distinction. There are blind Jews. With the temple, the same thing. There's a temple made without hands. That's why Paul said, what? Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. My goodness. Why? Because instead of a tent or building housing the essence of God, you house the essence of God. How do we know this? Jesus said, if you love me, and keep my commandments, then I and the Father will make our abode in you and sup with you. My goodness. That means their home will be in you. That's what it means. You keep his commandments, you're truly family. And he said, he, which is the word, and the Lord, the creator, will make their abode in you. Do you know what an abode is? That's a home, as a dwelling place will be within you. That makes you the temple of God. Oh, you're far more than what any of the world knows what you are. Don't let the world name you. Don't let them categorize you. No, no. Not solely up to the most high. Oh, and by the way, Jesus said, and the Bible said, Jesus said it, the Bible said, the apostle said, that you're hidden in him. You're hidden in Christ. You are to be revealed when Jesus is revealed. Isn't that something? 
So then when every eye sees him, you will be revealed. You already know how. That's not a mystery. When he is revealed, you will be revealed. Do you see that? A lot of people don't know that. And so they're walking around with the identity given to them by the world, not understanding that they've been fully adopted. There is no going back. You have great security in knowing that you are the people of God. Why? Because you believe upon his name. To believe upon his name is to believe what he spoke and what his name stands for. To believe that is to know the New Testament. That means you believe in the characteristics, the values, those properties of Christ Jesus as he set them forth in the New Testament. You believe in his redemption of sinners. That's what that means. That's why none should be judgmental, but have the mind of Christ, which is what? Which is to do what is necessary, to deliver the good news to all of whom you can, to do so without force. You don't break down doors. You simply offer and move forward. All right, let's continue to read. Now that you know that, now that you know that, now we can go in here. Maybe not too many worms are going to come out. They'll come out, but maybe not too many, because everybody didn't hear that. All right, let's continue. Let me get the mouse. The mouse disappeared. Come on, mouse, where you at? Okay, there we are. There we are. We got you. Revelation 17, here we go. There came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and he talked with me, saying unto me, come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Everybody pay attention. Everybody pay attention. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made with a drunk, or made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Now, we just heard about this similar term a few minutes ago. Uh-oh. And it was totally laid out. Yes, it was. So let's continue to read. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. We know who this seven heads and ten horned beast is, right? It is the first beast that is mentioned in Revelation. Not the second beast, the first beast. It's very important to remember. It's the first beast. The one with the seven heads. Hmm? The seven mountains. We're, we're going to go through all these descriptions. You're going to see it. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Having a golden cup in her hand full of the abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Of her fornication. And upon her forehead was name was was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Why is that important? If you read Jeremiah, you'll know. How did sin get to us? Anybody? How did sin get to us in the first place? How did sin get to us? Through fornication. How so, you may say, Mike? Because the Eve listened to the serpent over the living God. She believed the doctrine of Satan over the living God. That's called fornication. Now you know why in the book of Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, and all those other books, how Israel fornicated with those round about her. How she committed adultery with those round about her. You read that term over and over again. And sometimes people read that and say, what in the world? But yes, Israel committed adultery with those round about her. She fornicated with those round about her. Nobody else in the Bible was ever written to do that except Israel. God said, I would have given you a letter of divorce. But you went a-whoring. That's what he said. That's what God said. 
God said that to her. So what is that? That's her fallen state. Does God love Israel? You better believe it. He loves the Jews. He does not love sin. And when you're in a fallen state, you are in agreement with sin. And God does not like sin. He separates us from sin. That's called redemption. When God separates us from sin, we are redeemed. So he made a way to separate us from sin through repentance by way of the cross and the bloodshed on that cross. And a deal was sealed because Christ finished his process. So that act of redemption is permanent. That power is real. God doesn't look upon you as the sinner. God looks upon you as his redeemed, his children. Right through the blood of the Lamb, you're clean. He remembers your sin no more when you repent. He does not see your sin. Hmm? Okay, now let's continue. Listen, and upon her head, a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. When I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Well, we just read something like that. Wait a minute. So Revelation 17, 6 says, And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. When I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Did we read something about blood somewhere? Oh, for they have shed 16.6. Isn't that funny? Somebody's trying to tell us something. Revelation 16.6 says, For they have shed the blood of the saints and the prophets. Thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. He just told us who shed the blood of the saints and prophets. We read in 17.6, And I saw a woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Hmm? Are you you guys still here? Did you log out? What happened? I didn't know about the can of worms yet. Hmm? And that, that language is very similar, isn't it? Somebody says, uh, uh, the beast was uh, scarlet like blood too. Well, let's continue. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman, and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. I'm going to read that one more time. I will tell thee the mystery of the woman, and of the beast that, that does what? Carrieth her. That carries her. Carries her. Which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. Now let me pause. This may take the rest of the night. We're close to the closing. Here's why this may take the rest of the night. There's something you don't know. Something I cannot tell you the fullness of. Not yet, not until demonstration comes. But don't worry, we're going to cover it. Before you think revelation is totally conventional and can be explained with conventional things, please don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Please don't solve that because you'll be wrong. Because there are things you have not seen yet. There are many things you have not seen. And when I say you have not seen them, you don't know they exist. And because you don't know they exist, they don't enter into your mind and become a part of what you think is possible. So you don't add them in your thoughts when you're reading this. You don't consider them, and you should. And they will not be disclosed until they are disclosed during this time, right here. So let's continue. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. We know what that is. We know it's the first beast. 
who knows the first beast, under the power of, the, of, of who? The second beast, who had two horns like a lamb and spake as a dragon. That's the entire system. That's what these mountains are. That's what the beast is. You can't separate them. They're all one and the same. Let people theorize, but please go with the word of God. Now, let me continue to read this. Listen, it says, he'll go into perdition. They that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Let me ask you this. How in the world is a person going to ponder, going to wonder whose names were never in the book of life? What does that mean? It means they're going to see something. They're going to be exposed to something. And at that time, they're going to say, wait a minute. Am I even of the human race? Or is that my progenitor? Is that, is that what I'm from? Am I even of the human race? Or am I one of them? I'm telling you, you haven't seen everything. And so this is not considered, and it really should be. They're going to wonder whose names were not written in the book of life. From the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was and is not yet is. So guess what? They're going to behold the beast. They're going to behold the beast that was. They're going to behold the beast. That thing that was and is not yet is. They're going to behold a beast that used to exist. They're going to behold a beast. That is not that thing right now. But yet he is. His influence is power. The spirit of the thing. They're going to see it and know it and know where it is. They're going to know how vast and how broad it is and how it's been at work. They're going to see a truth of truths. And at that point, none of them will go backward. All life on earth will change. And it's not going to be some human being. Because they're going to wonder whose names were never, ever in the book of life. You know what that means? In order to be in the book of life, you have to be part of the creation of God. They're going to wonder if they were never a creation of God. But that that thing created them. Do you hear me? And you hear that thrown around right now. Right now. And we continue to read. Because this angel is explaining... And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are the seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings. Five are fallen. At least two. One is as accountability for the one. And the other is not yet come. Seven mountains with one individual over them all. That's in the book of Daniel. That is perfectly in the book of Daniel. I love the consistency of the word of God. And they shall give him the power of the arm. And they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. That's what it says in the book of Daniel. This individual is going to have indignation and shall go out and have intelligence with them that forsake the holy covenant. And they collectively will go in to Jerusalem and set up the abomination that make it desolate. They're going to take Jerusalem. This one king is going to do that. This one king, this one in the king is going to do that. Now let's call that king a force. Continue to follow me. There are seven kings, five are fallen, one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings. 
Now, see, this is what you have to hear. Now, we just heard there are seven kings. Five are fallen, one is, and the other is not yet coming. When he cometh, he must continue a short space. Follow me on this. There are seven kings. You hold up seven fingers, right? Five are fallen. Take a hand away. You got two more left, right? And if five are fallen, one is, one has not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. A short space. Listen, and then it says, And the ten horns must all source the ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. What is that? What is that? They have received no power as of yet, but will one hour with the beast. That means you're not going to know who they are. They don't show themselves. What are they going to do? Here it is. Listen. Listen. Because every king has some sort of cabinet, right? Every nation has some sort of agreement with other nations. A covenant with many. Oh, now you're starting to get it. And these, listen, and these have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Here's, here's a kicker. And these shall make war with the Lamb. The Lamb shall overcome them for the Lord of Lords, for, the, for he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Listen, and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Here it is, here's the kicker. For God hath put it in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God should be fulfilled. Uh-oh, Father, you did it again. Everybody thought the beast was going to get together and do what he wanted to do by the devil's power. Wrong. God put it in the hearts of those ten kings and give over their power to the beast one hour so that his, his, his indignation would be fulfilled. Our Father did that. What's that tell you? This is not out of control. This is precisely what your Father in Heaven is going to do. You know what I hear people saying? Oh, I'm not going to let some beast rise. We ought to pray him away. No, nope, your Father in Heaven is doing this. That's what prophecy is. Prophecy is not fortune telling. Well, I saw a man rise up and he just went and did some this. No, this is what God is going to do. This is what God has decreed. No one is going to make that fail. It will come about because it must come about because it's the process of deliverance. Your process of deliverance, you hit a brick wall. Did you not? You hit a few brick walls. Did you not? They're going to hit one too. And in that process, the Lord will redeem his people. When God redeems, he really redeems. Huh? He will thoroughly redeem, and he will not fail. Hmm? So God put it in the hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give, his, give their power unto the, um, unto the beast. They gave their power unto the beast. What does that mean? These ten kings who have received no power as of yet, but will one hour with the beast, Right? These people who have received no kingdom as of yet, but will one hour with the beast. That means during the time of that reign. During the time of that reign. Uh-oh, folks, wait a minute. We had a small interruption. That was a, a power issue. Hopefully you guys are still there. You're on a double backup, so it shouldn't bother it. During the time of that of that beast, right? The Lord's going to do exactly what he said he would do. Hold on, everybody. Stand by. Everybody stand by. Just for a second. Stand by. Let me do a little kung fu here. Just a little kung fu. Yep, that's hot. And then buy a bigger conduit for that one. It's always something. Hold on, everybody. Stand by. This is me at work. This is me bypassing. Live on air with power because we have backups. Uh, some of these, I'm going to have to write that down. That's going to have to be swapped. It's going to have to be swapped. It's going to 
come back and be gay star two. Okay, folks, I need to, let me write this down. Anyway. I'll forget if I don't, and then it'll happen again. I can't do that again. That wire's hot. Note to self, 60 amp wires needed. Anyway, our father's doing this. He's doing this for the purpose of what? If you know about the indignation, the trampling of Jerusalem underfoot, right? The abomination of desolation, all of it, all of that declared in the book of Daniel was initiated in the book of Jeremiah. The Lord tells us exactly why. Because Israel, Israel, when the prophet Jeremiah was sent, it's because Israel was totally, totally out of bounds with the Lord. Their priests would not listen to Jeremiah. They wouldn't. So God made a decree. He made a decree. And he said, he's going to have indignation upon them which would come about near the end. Near the end. And he would not repent of it. Because he said the whole world could have been healed through them. You know in the Bible when it says, if my people who are called by my name return and seek his face, humble themselves and pray. You remember that? He returned and healed the land. So if by you the land where you live in can be healed, by Israel the whole world can be healed. So that means what? If the world can be healed simply by Israel acknowledging their iniquity, turning their face back to the Lord, and the world would be healed, and that's holding true power over the whole world. We, we, us, we were fully redeemed through one man, weren't we? That man was Christ Jesus, now King of kings and Lord of lords, no longer, no longer a lamb for slaughter. Hmm? As King of kings and Lord of lords. We were redeemed through one. All humanity fell through one. Isn't that what the Bible says? Through one, sin entered into this world, corrupting everybody, and through one, redemption was set forth. Isn't that what it says? Yes, it says that. You see the process. So through Israel, the world could be healed of all this insanity. Because they chose not to obey the Lord, sin ran rampant and a curse is devouring the earth. Because they would not turn. That's why Jesus said he came unto his own and his own received him not. That's why he said he bid his guests, right? Oh, but they didn't want to show up, did they? So he dispatched and said, go get everybody you can get. Bring them in here. It's the same thing. Whomever something flows through and causes everybody else to be cursed by and has power over everybody else. You have power over the land you live in. If you were to ever collectively get together, turn your face toward the Lord, repent, acknowledge your ways and seek his face, he would turn back to you and heal the land you're in. So in truth, the land you live in is in chaos because you all aren't divided in that task. If you were to ever undo the division, collectively get together and turn your face back to the Lord being humble, seeking his face, he would heal the land. And because that's in the Bible, guess what? Then that means this in time thing would be put off even more. See, obedience, when people obey, the word of God is very consistent. It's quite real. And as you can see, the breakdown happens not because of the world, but because of us. In 2013, churches were turning against churches. In 2014, 15, 16, and 17, churches were bitterly talking against each other, cursing each other out, right? Doing weird things on the Internet, trying to invade other people's organizations and break them down. That's what they were doing. They were in high competition, angry at one another. You guys know about the fights. You know about the fights. 
They were happening, and many of you guys witnessed that. So there's great division among believers. And right after that, some idiot from the bushes saw that and said, guess what? Judgment starts in the house of God, which means once it happens and is effective through us, it's going to the world and nothing will stop it. And what do you see in the world right now? What do you see? You see division that nobody can repair. Everybody who tries to repair the division in this world and everything fails. Everybody who tries to repair it, they hit a brick wall. They can't do anything about it. It makes it worse. Why? Because we're the ones who let it through. So who holds power over the kings of this land that we live in? The saints do. You do. Not the world. You do. You're the ones with the voices to the Most High. You're the ones with the power to obey the living God, that his word be declared in this land. We have that power, but we're also choosing not to utilize it. When the saints can no longer stand together, that land will fall and fail. That's exactly what happened to Israel over and over and over and over and over again. Hmm? And the Bible says no nation on this earth has been through the stuff Israel has. And Daniel had it clear, wars and desolations are determined, decreed until the end. Not good times and parties. Wars and desolations. They are determined until the end. God's word is incredibly consistent. The problem again is us. We don't really want to accept everything in its simple form. Because we always want to do something else. But we're growing. See, Revelation also says the saints change. They reach a point of fulfillment. You guys will. That's what's happening now. That's why this is so amazing. It should have been a brawl by now. But it's not. That's amazing. That's amazing. I guess the worms, well, they didn't do anything but go back in the can. Hmm? God put it in the hearts of the fellows well into a green gift their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God should be fulfilled. The whole purpose of this is that the words of God be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. That could be interpreted many different ways. Many different ways. But I would always encourage everybody to wait for the fulfillment of God. And believe it or not, a great many things do not have to be figured out in the Bible. People are going to live through them. They'll know when the time comes, just like the Lord said. The Lord does not work by vanities, nor will he induce pride, right? If God were to give someone absolute clarity of revelation right now, you know and I know that person would be paraded around the earth as some sort of a new prophet in the earth. You guys know this. If anybody were able to do that, and everybody were to believe it, you know that person would be paraded as the number one voice of the living God in the earth right now. You guys already know this. Why in the world would the Lord do that? He seeks to save us, not to have us deceived, not to have us follow a falsehood at the very end. No. And so if you notice piece by piece, he's unsealing things to us. You're, being, you're, you're able to understand, not always able to articulate. Because there are many times when you do understand, and without being given the task, you have attempted to explain it to somebody else. The words got jumbled up in your mind, and you lost the understanding you had in the first place. All of you know that. You know how the Lord works. You take something without authorization of somebody and try to go tell it on the mountain. The Lord didn't give that to you. The more you talk, the more it's jumbled up in your mind, the more it leaves. 
God can give you understanding in your mind, but you're not allowed to write it down. And when you attempt to write it down, it leaves with every letter you attempt to write. You already know that. That's a spiritual thing. That's a true spiritual thing. No technology needed. The Lord will give us revelation, which means all these things are going to be revealed. They're going to be revealed. All right, folks. We're going to halt the other half as an even bigger can of worms it is. And I know that, listen, I know that people, they do break down these scriptures into knowledge bits that they know of. But I submit this, there are lots of things we don't know about. There are things that I know about, I, I, I wish, I, I mean, I truly desire not to even know about. And be, to be candid with you guys. There are fearful things I know. Right? That I used to have to fight. You guys don't know the fight I used to have. To clear my vision of things. I mean, the silliest situations after being exposed to certain things can cause fear that will stop your heart. And in the Bible, when it says men's hearts are going to fail them for fear for looking after those things which are coming upon the earth, it's going to be far worse than the mind is able to imagine. I'm telling you right now, your mind is not able to imagine. Very specific, horrible things. Your mind is not. There are certain shapes you can see that can turn your blood ice cold. It doesn't matter if you believe or not. You see it, I'm telling you now, your blood will turn ice cold. And that's from a shape. Because you'll say that shape does not belong in existence. What is that? And it doesn't matter if it's big or small. It could be tiny. It could be one inch tall. And I'm telling you, it could give you a heart attack from fear. Size. Nothing. You see certain things. You cannot unsee it. And anybody who says, well, I'm over it now, they're lying. Because they're not. They avoid certain things, so they don't have to deal with it all the time. It doesn't matter how strong you are, or what you think you are. You see certain things, it's going to mess up your world. Period. And there are lots of things people have not seen yet. They don't even know about it. And it's not meant to be seen. Like that. Nevertheless, there will be many who will have no choice. Still others that will occupy the same space with those things in the end. I, for one, have only one piece of advice. When it comes to, to, to equating revelation to those things you know, is this. When you become wise, you find out something. The more you read the Word of God, the more you realize how much you never knew in the first place. When you're young, you misjudge the world, thinking it's within the confines of your comprehension. As you get older, you realize your comprehension cannot house what this world actually is. And so for us to take revelation, utilize what we know that exists around us, and then determine that's revelation, it's an error. That's why interpretations of revelation changes every single year. Every single time something happens, people change their interpretation of revelation. Nobody has to do that. Nobody does. Be prepared for the spiritual realm to be real. 
and rely upon your Father for guidance every single day of your life. He is protecting all of you. See, there's, there are people here that know you're being protected. You know what the sad thing is all too often? You don't know you're being protected. You don't know you're being shielded. You don't know that you're being closely looked after. And only love can sustain you. You may not know that. But one day that's going to be painfully clear. And in that day, all of us will have a full understanding. And not one of us will fail to give God praise. And give glory to Christ Jesus. Because we'll know what he's been doing. What he has done. We'll know. Anyway, let me not ramble. Folks, I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. Possibly a little before Pastor Paul. Probably. But we'll see how that works. We'll see how that works. you certainly see me in the chat room. You will. Now, I'm going to say God bless each and every one of you. You guys are so different during this time. You're different. Very different. It's, uh, it's, it's quite astounding. I didn't have to pull out my boxing gloves. Had to use no digital kung fu. Jeez. Kind of spoiled in that one, right? I do appreciate it, guys. I, listen, I appreciate the opportunity to be able to talk with you guys. I appreciate it even more if you realize how much you're loved by the Most High. And if you help each other to stay upright as much as you're able to. Encourage each other in the Lord. Let's let the Lord's truth be the standard of truth here. Let's do that. God bless each of you. I'm going to see you next time right here at the Council of Time. God bless.